This is CBC Here and Now. The Newfoundland Growlers fans can't wait to get in. Any second these doors will open and a night that can make sports history in this province will begin. The Kelly Cup is on the line tonight at mile one. We'll take it there live. Good evening and welcome to Here and Now. I'm Debbie Cooper. And I'm Anthony Germain. As you just saw with Zach, we are live at mile one tonight as the Growlers get set for game six. But first, news about the judicial recount that could determine whether we have a minority or majority government. The current provincial minority government hinges on just five votes. And today we got a little closer to finding out how the recount process will work. Now, if the recount puts the Liberals ahead of the NDP, there would be a red majority flipping the current power balance. Here now is Katie Breen explains. And they were talking about ballots here at the Supreme Courthouse today, but the actual pieces of paper aren't in St. John's yet. They're still in Lab West where they're under police custody because it turns out when results are precarious, security is taken pretty seriously. Now, the ballots will be brought here to the courthouse. Then when they're not in the vault, they're going to be guarded by sheriff's officers. We know how many ballots were were issued. We know how many ballots are in the box. We know how many ballots should be left over, how many canceled, how many rejected. So, you know, we've got a pretty, uh, you know, pretty secure number of what we've got, uh, got in each of the boxes. Chalk was at the hearing today. His lawyer and the lawyers for the Labrador West candidates were talking over how the judicial recount will play out. The lawyers will go through the ballots first. Clearly marked votes will be tallied. The others will be set aside. Then they'll argue their way through the discrepancy pile and the judge will have the final say. The recount will start June 19th. Lawyers will be trying to get excluded votes counted and some of the counted votes excluded. Chalk says the district had a few special ballots disqualified the first time around, but he doesn't think they'll be accepted in the recount and feels the initial result will stand. The only difference could be is if they decided that a ballot shouldn't have been rejected or there was a ballot counted that should have been rejected. So that, that could be the only differences there. Three days have been blocked out for the recount process. NDP candidate Jordan Brown is hoping to keep his slim victory over Liberal incumbent Graham Leto. Katie Breen, CBC News, St. John's. The provincial government is standing by its plan to build a new mental health facility to replace the Waterford Hospital. It agrees the new site in St. John's is on a floodplain, but as here and now's Mark Quinn reports, the government says that won't be a problem. This is where the new mental health hospital is going. The hostel in the foreground here will be demolished to accommodate it. But here's the problem. The Health Sciences Centre is already in a floodplain. Here's the same area in 1986. And Works and Transportation Minister Steve Crocker says Hurricane Igor made that clear when water came inches from flooding the hospital. What we've done here is when, when we looked at the possibility of building a new mental health facility on this site was an extension of the berm. So I think there, there is a challenge, and you alluded to it, uh, with regards to climate change. But we're quite confident from what we've seen from the experts in this field that we can certainly mitigate that risk. This is where the new hospital is set to be built. Some say it would make sense to build it north of here, outside the floodplain. But the government says water won't be a problem for the Health Sciences Centre. The berms that are going to be constructed at the, at the Health Sciences facility will not have an impact upstream or downstream. Now, does the city have, have I guess, their own issues maybe when it comes to downstream flooding or upstream flooding? That's quite possible. Health officials say this is clearly the best place for the new hospital. They say the chosen location is optimal for delivering improved mental health care. And that was very clearly a message from the All-Party Committee, from Towards Recovery, from the Recovery Council. It was very clear these two had to go together. Now, some people will remember this sign behind me went up before the election. Government officials now say they'll offer tenders for the berms in the next few months, and the new facility will be open in 2024. Mark Quinn, CBC News, St. John's. An exciting night for the Gower Street United Church coming up this Wednesday when it gets the designation of affirming. What does that mean? Stay tuned.
what a beautiful warm day it was out there today. Take a look at some of these highs. 20 degrees in St. John's haven't reached that temperature since September 29th uh, of last year. 22 degrees in Gander, 24 in Twillingate. Now those temperatures along the south coast a little bit cooler. You're finally or you're starting to see that uh, marine influence. It's been a lot of the northeast coast seeing that, but humid as well. Here's some of the uh, what it felt like 26 degrees in Gander, 22 in St. John's and we can thank this uh, stream of moisture moving in uh, from the Gulf or at least uh, from the, the Atlantic rather. And we're gonna continue to see that as we head through the night tonight. Some showers are moving through as well. Heavy at times as we head through the overnight. I'll have all the details on the forecast coming up. Police have seized a lot of contraband cigarettes in central Newfoundland. A woman from Dover and a man from Hare Bay were investigated by the RCMP's Federal Serious and Organized Crime Unit. Police believe the couple received regular shipments of significant quantities of improperly stamped tobacco products and sold them in the Dover area. The pair was arrested on Friday when they were allegedly picking up a shipment of contraband tobacco in Gander. Police seized 23 cases, more than 1,000 cartons. They say it represents a loss of revenue to the province of more than $120,000. A Ford pickup was seized as well. Lede spent riding around in a taxi ended in a fatal stabbing. That was part of the focus on the first day of Craig Pope's second degree murder trial today. Ryan Cook was in the newsroom and he joins us, was in the courtroom rather, and he joins us from our newsroom. So Ryan, the Crown prosecutor said that things turned from happy to unhinged in a heartbeat. How did the circumstances change so quickly? Well, the Crown is going to make the case that an exchange of money led to things turning so bad. Like you said, Craig Pope and Jonathan Collins spent the day riding around in a jiffy cab, going from place to place, stop to stop all afternoon. But witnesses are expected to testify that it was the last stop where things turned ugly when Pope's father pulled up alongside them in a van. It happened here on Alderberry Lane near Mundy Pond Road. Crown prosecutors say Pope's father passed over a bag of money and an altercation began inside the cab. A fight spilled over into the street. The first witness today said she drove down Alderberry Lane and saw the commotion. She said Collins was walking backwards onto Mundy Pond Road, both men swinging their fists, and then Collins dropped. Trevor Kennedy, the first officer on scene, testified he found Collins with a stab wound to his abdomen and frothing at the mouth. He suspected he may also be overdosing, so he hit him with a shot of naloxone. Kennedy stayed with Collins until he was pronounced dead at the hospital four hours later. Now, Kennedy got emotional a few times on the stand today and, and paused. He was describing a moment during that ambulance ride where Collins looked at him, smiled, flashed him a peace sign, and then his vital signs crashed. And that was the last time that Collins showed any sign of life. Kennedy is back on the stand again tomorrow morning when he'll be cross-examined by the defense. Reporting live from the newsroom, I'm Ryan Cook for Here Now. A day after the final report of the inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls was delivered, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says he wants to concentrate on moving forward and not on how the tragedy is described. One of the challenges we face right now is uh, a lot of people are engaging in debate over words. As I've said, uh, we accept the findings of the commissioners uh, that it was genocide. But our focus is going to be, as it must be, on the families, on the communities that have suffered such loss, on the systems that have repeatedly failed Indigenous women and girls across this country. Trudeau was criticized for not using the word genocide during his speech at the closing ceremony yesterday. He took questions from reporters today after speaking at a global summit on women's health, equality and well-being. Well, Kruger is busy this week removing some of its old debris from Deer Lake's drinking water. Dive teams and other workers are spending this week hauling up 55 old barrels from the bottom of the Humber Canal. The canal feeds Kruger's Deer Lake powerhouse and doubles as the town's water supply. The barrels were discovered in the canal two years ago, and they're believed to be about 70 years old. Two old barges from the 1920s are also at the bottom of the canal, but they have been deemed safe to stay where they are. The town is under a boil water order while this work is underway.
don't know what's actually in the barrels uh, at this point. Uh, the safety of the uh, water supply for the town of Deer Lake and surrounding areas is uh, very important to us. Uh, our employees and uh, certainly their families and our families live in the community. So we're taking all the steps necessary to make sure that the water supply is safe. Blowback against a Crime Stoppers poster campaign in downtown St. John's has led to complaints with some people ripping down the posters. The anonymous messages are harsh, but Crime Stoppers is not apologizing. The organization says the campaign is designed to reinforce the message that all citizens play a role in making communities safer and contacting Crime Stoppers with a tip ensures confidentiality. Critics say the posters promote a negative and inaccurate view of the city's downtown, especially at the start of the busy tourist season. And the numbers appear to back them up. Statistics Canada says in 2017, the largest decrease in crime in Canada happened in St. John's. You have to realize that anything that out there in the economy affects downtown, you know, worse. We're like a snapshot of the city. So focusing that campaign strictly on downtown is like putting up a beware of dog sign. You know, you're kind of looking, you know, where's the dog? And people who don't understand or never understood what the campaign was about were saying, what's all this about? Is this place safe? So it gives that feeling and that illusion that downtown isn't safe. First of all, why did the city give permission for the postering to be done in the downtown without knowing what the content was? Um, you know, saying that it was a reputable organization is not good enough unless you actually know what the content was. And I think, I think that if somebody at the city had actually looked at the, uh, the text would probably have thought, yeah, maybe this is not a good idea, or I'd like to think that. We only ha basically have a say regarding the bylaws in our heritage area, and that's all we have control over because we don't deal in, in issues certainly of morality or freedom of speech. Uh, certainly that, that's, that's something that is a, you know, a societal thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so the only reason that this has come to City Council is because of our downtown heritage bylaw. In Newfoundland, Crime Stoppers certainly should have engaged the business owners certainly more because they're the ones who have actually approached business owners to see whether or not they could post them. That's, that's, that's their responsibility. <laughs> This place filled up fast. The ECHL conference or ECHL championship and Newfoundland and Labrador sports history on the line tonight at mile one. Can the Growlers win this province's first championship? We'll talk it up after the break.
Double digits in St. John's and the first number was a two. It was. <laughs> it was lovely. How exciting. <laughs> yeah, so warm today and you can feel yeah. that humidity in the air as well. It was certainly welcome. First person who complains about it. Yeah, deals with Ashley. <laughs> Do with me. Uh, but yeah, absolutely gorgeous day today. We did see uh, lots of rain. Uh, but we'll take it, right? Mm -hmm. You can Good see the flowers, the yeah. like time lapse has started all around us now. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, those trees. Oh, I bet you it'll be another week probably. Mm -hmm. And then okay, we'll good. see some. I don't, I don't really know. I have no idea how fast that stuff happens here. But <laughs> Depends on what part of the province you're in. That's right. That's right. But if uh, we take a look at those temperatures, we'll just reiterate that just in case you missed out a little bit early. Plenty of 20s on that map. Twilling Gate, the hot spot, reached 24 degrees this afternoon. And again, that Humidex uh, feeling closer to 26 in Gander. This afternoon, 22 in St. John's. Now, taking a look at the current temperatures, was still uh, quite mild, sitting around 17 degrees in St. John's, uh, 20 in Gander, 22 still in Twillingate. Happy Valley Goose Bay currently sitting at 8 degrees. So. Uh, we are starting to see some heavier showers move in again. So we're seeing that steady stream of southern uh, southern air. And as we head through the next couple of hours, we could even hear a few rumbles of thunder uh, associated with some of this rain. And that's going to uh, the showers are going to continue to spread a little bit further east as we head through the night tonight, taking a look at that future tracker uh, unsettled up through Labrador as well. Not quite as warm. Slight chance we could see a few flurries through Lab City or at least western Labrador tonight as those temperatures will dip down, eventually clearing out, though. Uh, so with those clear skies, light winds, temperatures will drop well below the zero degree mark overnight tonight for you. Uh, otherwise, sitting still in the high single digits, so nine degrees for St. John's those southerly or southwesterly winds gusting upwards of about 40 kilometers per hour. Plenty of shower activity expected. Uh, Corner Brook, six degrees, same for St. Anthony overnight tonight. And then uh, along the coast, still sitting between two and four degrees. Happy Valley Goose Bay, six, and there you go. Uh, temperature around minus three overnight. That chance of flurries or showers and then clearing skies uh, for you with those light winds. Now, tomorrow, Gonna likely see some uh, sun and cloud through the afternoon before that chance of showers will move through. This is pretty widespread, likely will be more in the way of scattered showers tomorrow afternoon. Uh, it does look like the Avalon in eastern Newfoundland should stay uh, mainly clear. Uh, for a mix of sun and cloud through the afternoon and then up through Labrador. Another unsettled day with that risk of showers moving through. The showers will move in for eastern Newfoundland and uh, the Avalon through the overnight. So here's a look at those temperatures. A little cooler than what we're seeing today as we get out of that southwesterly flow uh, or at least that stream of moisture that we're in right now. Uh, somewhere between 17, 18 degrees it looks like for Bonavista, 9 for Placentia, uh, Placentia rather, and you're going to see those cooler temperatures along the south coast. Marystown still looking at 18 tomorrow, 19 for Grand Falls, Windsor. Again, you'll see that potential for some showers in the afternoon. And then heading towards the west coast, sunshine with that chance of showers moving through as well. Uh, Port of Basque, Burgio still sitting uh, just above the uh, double digits, 10 degrees there. St. Anthony, 17. We're going to see some uh, warm temperatures up through Cartwright as well, 14 degrees. And then heading towards Happy Valley Goose Bay, 12. Lab City should sit around 11 degrees, but you're still looking at that chance of showers through the afternoon. Now, looking ahead, it does look a little bit unsettled, but these warm temperatures stick around. So I have all those details coming up. Thanks, Ashley. Well, tonight the Newfoundland Growlers could do something that no pro sports team in this province has ever done, win a championship. Mm, hope the, despite those warm temperatures Ashley was mentioning, I hope the ice at mile one stays intact. The Growlers at home tonight taking on the Toledo Walleye in game six of the Kelly Cup Finals. Here now, Zach Gowdy is there and he joins us live. So, Zach, where do things stand right now in this series? Well, a lot of excitement here at mile one. Can you feel it? We're hearing the uh, cowbells, ugly sticks, lots of air horns, just anything that makes a lot of noise. Fans are in here tonight with their finest accessories. They know what's on the line. The, uh, the Growlers are up three games to two in this series. They could hoist the Kelly Cup in front of these home fans here tonight at mile one. Of course, this province has had a lot of sports success here, uh, stories, but no professional team has ever claimed a championship. A few have been very close. The St. John's Maple Leafs went all the way to the Calder Cup Finals, as did the St. John's uh, Ice Caps. Recently, the St. John's Edge have now been to the finals in basketball, but tonight the Growlers could do what no professional team in this province has ever done and hang a championship banner in the Raptors here at Mile 1.
Now, they almost won this thing on the road. The Growlers took the first two games in this series before the series shifted to Toledo, Ohio for games three, four, and five. Now, the Toledo Walleye have some very loud fans of their own. More than 8,500 of them packed the stadium for those games. The Growlers still managed to get a road win. They could have closed this thing out on Saturday night, but it wasn't meant to be. The Walleye won game five, sending the series back to St. John's. Now, the fans here may be not too disappointed with that loss because that gives the Growlers two chances now to win this championship in front of their home fans. Uh, they have tonight and of course game seven if necessary tomorrow. Now the team staying focused but they all know what's on the line. They know how special a win would be for this province. Today I spoke with Growlers forward Scott Pooley and coach John Snowden about their chance to make history. I mean it's really exciting obviously it's a tremendous opportunity not only for our team I know we got the whole province and the city behind us, so it's uh, we're definitely feeling the energy and feeling the love, and and we're really excited to get to tonight. Obviously, I, I think it holds a lot of weight. It's 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 an awesome opportunity for for obviously the Newfoundland guys, but also this team and for the organization in general and uh, from top to bottom. So, you know, not a lot of these opportunities come around a whole lot, and when you're presented with them, it's it's one of those things that you really want to take advantage of. A sellout crowd here at Mile One. Uh, the team was asking the fans to make as much noise as possible, and they're already doing it almost an hour before game time. Reporting live at Mile One, I'm Zach Gowdy for here at night. Thanks so much, Zach. We're going to get back to right. him a little bit later, Mile One, and we're all sending good vibes. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> walleye bad. <laughs> We realized uh, about a year ago that we had a lot to learn about what it really means to be inclusive. Affirmed believers. A St. John's Church welcomes the challenge to welcome. That story's ahead.
Well, I'm at Gower Street United Church in downtown St. John's. A very interesting ceremony is going to be happening here on Wednesday night as it becomes an affirming ministry. Let's find out what that means now. Gail, so what does this mean to be affirming? So an affirming ministry under the uh, guidance of the United Church of Canada is a, a church community that is intentional and public about its inclusion of um, people of uh, uh, people, LGBTQ individuals and families, but inclusion more widely as well. So thinking about all uh, individuals and communities that are marginalized in society. Okay, so this has, yeah. this has more to do than just simply gay marriage. The, oh, that, that, that's very true. We've actually been doing same-gender marriages here at Gower for about 12 years. But, um, but this is, we realized uh, about a year ago that we had a lot to learn about what it really means to be inclusive uh, in the broader sense to LGBTQ individuals. And uh, so we've taken the past uh, several months to undertake some educational events and uh, just some, some really intentional learning about what we can do to make our church community inclusive. Okay, now Lauren, you, you've been here for a while. Give me a sense of some of the challenges of being affirming versus not being affirming. Well, I think that the main thing is, is what people think it is and, the, and what it is not. That we're not a quote unquote gay church, but we are a church where gay and people of any uh, uh, transgender or whatever are, more, are quite welcome and welcomed to come in and participate and be a part of us. There's not a them and an us, it's, it's us. So when you say that we are all God's children, we are all God's children. Well, let me talk to the person who you have made the boss here. Uh, Pamela, you're the reverend. Yes. What, what does this mean for you and, and what you do here? Um, it's really exciting. Um, Wednesday, uh, we're going to be having an affirmed celebration, which means that we officially get our designation and our certificate from the United Church of Canada. Um, and so, you know, we really want people to know that uh, this is a belonging event. It's a great testament to community and not just community within the church, but community, uh, the wider community. Um, For people who aren't active in, in the United right. Church, how big a deal is this? Uh, it's a huge deal. We are the first uh, church to become an affirmed church in, the pro in Newfoundland. There is also one in Labrador, but we're the first church One's in Ireland. the province. Yeah. And so it's a real uh, intentional time for us to look inward at how we're doing things and also to be inviting others to be with us in the best way that they know how. Um, and being, you know, everyone is a spiritual person and uh, people seek out ways uh, to renew their faith or to walk in spiritual ways in many different ways. And so we also uh, want to say that, you know, church on Sunday is not the only way that you can become enriched uh, in your faith. Or, but, you know, there's many different ways, whether it's coming to a group on Tuesday night or dropping into the office and sitting down and have a coffee. Um, and so we want that message to be there, that every person is welcome, every person is a child of God, period. There's no question mark and there's no other statements to be made than that. All right, well, uh, I wanna offer you congratulations, Thank obviously you. a big night. So what's going to happen on Wednesday just to, to wrap everything up here? So there will be lots of music. Uh, the the uh, celebration starts at seven o'clock, lots of music, a little bit of talking, the children will be involved. It will be, uh, we said earlier it's going to be a lovely chaotic event okay. <laughs> that we're looking forward to all right obviously yeah. very important for all of you congratulations on the thank designation you, and you. appreciate your time thank you Great. thank you anthony lovely yeah so a big event and uh, as they mentioned the, the, the doors of gary united will be open and they want anybody who's in the st john's area who wants to go there seven o'clock it all starts uh, her honor lieutenant governor judy foot uh, we'll be there, the choirs and all that. So it'll be a, a big event. At a, and if you've never been inside Gower, it's so beautiful. You should go just to check out the windows and the ambiance. And as you can mm -hmm. tell, uh, a lot of fellowship and good feelings. I'm going have a dinner like with sweets, candy. Still ahead tonight, celebrating Eid and marking the end of the Muslim Holy Month. You'll hear one man's experience growing up Muslim in this province.
Well, if you've been there for big events, you certainly know that a sold out crowd at mile one on the edge of their seats tonight, that will bring some excitement. The Growlers just one win away from a championship and possibly a storybook ending to their inaugural season. And nobody's feeling the butterflies more than team owner Dean McDonald. Here now, Zach Gowdy, of course, he is at mile one tonight and uh, Dean McDonald is with him. Zach? Yes, indeed, I am joined by Growlers owner Dean McDonald and uh, Dean, the players are paid to keep calm, but how are you feeling tonight? I uh, can't pay me enough. <laughs> I'm so nervous, but hey, that's all part of the fun. Uh, you have been traveling with the team on this playoff run. That means you were in Toledo, Ohio uh, for their most recent road streak. And uh, when the team came back on Sunday night, there was a very special welcome waiting for you guys. Just tell us about that. We came over the escalator. There was a massive amount of fans there, and it was kind of like that turning point where you kind of went, my God, you know, the, the town, the city, the province is really behind us. And uh, I know the players were really moved by it. They were high-fiving the fans there, and uh, that really put a lot of gas in our tank. You really feel that energy continuing down here tonight as you hear all of the ugly sticks and the cowbells just yeah. making as much noise as they can. It's incredible. Look, Newfoundland, uh, Newfoundlanders want to win. And uh, it's been a long time coming. I keep telling the Toledo fans told me it was uh, 1996 they last one. I said, we've been from 1497 since we've won. <laughs> Now you can take this thing back a year. You guys starting out on this journey, I mean, I guess you couldn't have imagined really a more perfect way uh, to wrap up the inaugural season. No, not at all. I mean, we started kind of slow. We got great buzz about the name and the logo, and we won some awards for that. And the team started to gel and get better and better, and suddenly here we are, and, uh, you know, we really like our chances. And do you feel the success that you've had uh, building towards the end of the season has also been building in terms of the fans, their appreciation for this team, and people really getting on this train? Absolutely. As the fans have started to see the game itself, and you know, so many more fans saw it as the playoffs went through, suddenly they realized, wow, this is a really fast game, really young team, a group of brothers who uh, want to bring it home for, for the fans here. And uh, just before I let you go, I saw the practice this morning. Some of the playoff beards are getting a little <laughs> long on those guys. Yeah. Do the owners have any, uh, you know, playoff traditions or superstitions of their own? Oh, it's my first playoff, but I'm wearing the same outfit I've worn every playoff game, and I have washed it. But, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, there's a few sit in the same seats and all that kind of stuff. You know, I go up and see the broadcast team, two taps on the shoulder, high fives before the game starts. You know, all the silly things you do, anything for an edge. <laughs> well, don't change your routine oh, tonight. <laughs> I won't. Uh, Growl is owner D. McDonald. Good luck to you tonight. Thanks so much. Appreciate it, Zach. It's sports history and the Kelly Cup on the line tonight at Mile One Center. Reporting live for here and now, I'm Zach Young. Oh, that's great, Zach. And make sure Dean McDonald gets back to the right seat. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> don't, right. Don't want to jinx it. <laughs> Well, as uh, you know now, today is an important day for Muslims. It's Eid. Eid marks the end of the holy month of Ramadan, a time when Muslims fast. The prayers today mark the end of that fasting. It's a day that ends in celebrations and sweets for kids. My family and I have a dinner like with sweets, candy, and like so I like some dinners and stuff like that. The families. Um, put a lot of sweets up, make a lot of sweets, because when the pa other families to come to them, they have something to put up. And they like drinks and candy and chocolate, all of these kinds. In most places, the prayers happen in a mosque, but not in St. John's. Here now is Peter Cowan explains. Normally, this would be an indoor soccer field, but this morning the Technoplex here in St. John's has been transformed for the prayers for Eid. This is one of the most important days for Muslims. It's marking the end of Ramadan, and it's a time traditionally when Muslims come together to pray. But the issue here is the mosque in St. John's just isn't big enough to hold all the Muslims here. Why is that? Well, the population has been growing. For example, there's a lot of new students and new Canadians who've come to St. John's. But I think as the in Muslim population, when somebody comes, they need to know whether there is a mosque in the, in the city and is there any you know, like education which is being provided. And once they know that, they are more comfortable settling down. And then that's the reason 
Our population in Newfoundland has grown by leaps and bounds. Every year it's a struggle to find enough room. Last year it was a hockey arena. Before that it was a hotel ballroom. The long-term solution though is going to be to build a bigger mosque and plans are in the works. In fact they've bought a piece of land right next to the new marijuana grow operation but the challenge now will be raising enough money to construct it. A lot of the members here are new Canadians or students, not exactly with a lot of money to contribute, and that's why the hope is that various levels of government may contribute in order to build a new facility. Peter Cowan, CBC News, St. John's. Well, this isn't the normal outfit you're used to seeing at a religious service. The security volunteers today were wearing bulletproof vests, not because of a specific threat, but after attacks on mosques in Quebec City and New Zealand, they want to be careful. There are people who feel apprehensive. There are people who are uh, anxious. Their families are anxious. It is just to have a you know, sense of security that yes, you know, um, we are living, although we are living in a most peaceful, I think, uh, place on, in Canada and on earth, I, I would say, uh, you know, New Zealand, what happened, you know, like in New Zealand, who, who expected these things to happen in New, New Zealand? Well, it's time now for the final installment of our series, Ramadan on the Rock. And tonight, we want you to meet a Muslim man who was born and raised in this province so that you can find out what it's like to practice Islam here on the island. You know, when I was younger, going to birthday parties, of course, I couldn't have the, uh, you know, the pepperoni on the pizza, but all the parents always made sure that they had a, you know, a cheese pizza for me. And Newfoundland, I think, is, uh, is great that way. Ramadan, the holiest month for Muslims across the world, is filled with fasting from dawn to dusk, festivity and food. I've been lucky to experience Ramadan and Eid in India and Dubai. But what does Ramadan look like in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean? What does it mean to be a Muslim Newfoundlander? Looking for answers, I, Prajwala Dikshit, went into the homes and hearts of people exploring Ramadan on the Rock. I love it. I think I was very fortunate to, uh, one, uh, uh, you know, be born into a Muslim family. Um, you know, I don't know if I would have found Islam otherwise. So I, I take that as a blessing. I thank God that I was born as a Muslim and, and had that blessing. And to be born in Newfoundland, um, that's a blessing as well. I would say I'm, I'm Newfie, I'm Muslim first, Newfie second. Uh, I'm probably Canadian third and then Egyptian fourth. Yeah, I'm Newfie with Egyptian blood. I wish I grew up with you. It sounds awesome. And I think that's why for you, like, you know, our views on Islam and like how it's it's more difficult for me to be Muslim. Like, it's, it to be, yeah. yeah. Like, but Yasser. Sorry, has that changed since you moved to Victoria I want to say it has. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's just like, you know, like Yasser would be like, we'll be like out bowling and we'll be like, okay, I'm just going to go to the car and pray. And like, <laughs> um, it's just nice. Yeah. I, I'd say probably <laughs> the fondest memories is uh, we we used to just my dad and my mom would literally come and hand us our food in our bed so we didn't Aww. have to get out of bed. And I remember my dad <laughs> oh, yeah. one day. I mean, you don't know what you you literally you know my dad would tap me on the shoulder. I'd wake up like all blurry eyed, you know, could barely see, and I but I could smell. <laughs> and I could smell something absolutely like this delicious. This is, I was probably. This for Sahur? Yeah, this is for breakfast exactly in the morning. What I was right? say. So, you have to cram as much food as you can in your body as quick as possible before dawn. But I just remember this one day, my dad, I, I woke up, my eyes weren't even open yet, and I could smell something, and it just smelled so good. And I was like, what is this? And uh, my dad lays, lays the food on, you know, a nice tray on basically on my lap. And he's like, here, I think you would like this. And there's like this literally like quadrupled burger. And I love burgers. And, uh, but I mean, having a burger for breakfast, that's like, that's like, that's the best thing ever when you're, you know, 12 years old, uh, let alone a quadruple burger with like cheese in between each patty and uh, all the fixings. And I just, I always remember that. I mean, it was, yeah. I. I kill that burger and it was absolutely delicious and I did not go hungry that day. <laughs> How does it feel when Ramadan ends? Um, it's kind of sad. 
Like I, yeah, it's, I think last year we didn't have like a routine really because we were just kind of getting to in the groove. But I think this year, like I'm gonna be like it's only been a couple of days, but I love waking up with you and you know and sitting together and eating. We don't really do that as much throughout the yeah. So I think it's it's sad. East Coast Trail Association was born 25 years ago. It was 1994, and this was the start. I probably shouldn't have worn this on the hike today, but at the big Trail Razor hike on Saturday, June 8th, you can do the East Coast Trail your way. Join CBCNL at the annual Trail Razor hike in support of the East Coast Trail Association. The fun starts in Bay Bulls with five hikes to choose from. It's skipping. Register online at eastcoasttrail.com. Here we are. Just what we took you so long? I thought, we were, I thought we were trapped in time for a <laughs> moment. Yeah. Welcome back. Yeah. Uh, Ashley, you were saying about the, the temperatures today. They were lovely, mm -hmm. but uh, um, what, humid. Some humid. people don't like that. But And when it rained, it yeah. rained. It poured. It, yeah. it was tropical. <laughs> it, it did feel very tropical yeah. today. Yeah. Uh, I loved it, mm. um, but uh, we are going to see this rain continue, not tomorrow. Well, tomorrow, yes, but we're going to see more rain move in as we uh, head towards Thursday. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, we'll see that rain move in late day. You can see that on the future tracker there for the Avalon in eastern Newfoundland. And then eventually through the day on Thursday, it looks like things should uh, clear out for some areas, except down along the south coast and the Avalon. We're still looking at uh, that chance of showers moving through overnight and then continuing into the afternoon. Uh, on Thursday. So here's a look at the forecast. We're looking at temperatures around 15 degrees for St. John's. Uh, 10 for Marystown, same for Port of Ask, and then Corner Brook, Grand Falls, Windsor, all getting uh, into those high teens. With more sunshine, it looks like, for parts of Central. And then for 13, 13 degrees for uh, Happy Valley, Goose Bay, and Lab City. 
is uh, sitting around 9 degrees. So if we look a little bit ahead at the long range, you can see that shower activity moving through Friday morning again, clearing skies through central and then up through uh, most of the um, Labrador, you're still looking at those unsettled conditions and that's really going to continue through the weekend. Now Saturday afternoon does look like it should clear out at times with uh, some more rain moving through Saturday afternoon and then continuing to spread across into Sunday morning. So it looks like it will be a little bit of a, a messy weekend but some sunshine will peak through at times. So here's a look at the forecast. 17 degrees tomorrow, Thursday, looking at 15 and then uh, Friday for 17 degrees. And that's where those showers will move in. Again, I have sunshine peaking out on Saturday and then same for Sunday at 14 degrees. Now for uh, central Newfoundland, 19 tomorrow, and then you're gonna stay with that 19 to 20 degree range, Saturday 11, 13 on Sunday. And again, it makes the sun and cloud with that chance of showers uh, moving through there. And then for uh, Western Newfoundland, 17 degrees tomorrow. Your mid-teen temperatures will continue through Friday and then a little bit of a dip in those temperatures Saturday and Sunday, uh, 11 and 12 degrees there. Again, more sunshine it looks like on Saturday and then eventually Sunday you'll see some cloud cover move through. Now overnight lows around 10 degrees for Thursday and then we dip down to three degrees by the time Sunday night rolls around. Up through uh, eastern Labrador, it looks like teen temperatures 12 to 15 through Friday, Saturday at 10 and then Sunday dipping back down to those single digits sitting around uh, eight degrees with plenty of uh, precipitation on the horizon. And then for western Labrador, it looks like showers or flurries in the morning, then sun clearing out tomorrow. And then Thursday, you're looking at essentially the same forecast. Those overnight lows hovering around two or three degrees means uh, we could see some uh, overnight flurry. So let's look at the forecast. I'll have your weather photo when I come back. Security was tight today in Beijing as people marked the 30th anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre. There is no official commemoration in China where the event is censored from the internet and social media. But visitors gathered in Tiananmen to watch the flag raising as they do every day. But in 1989, Chinese troops opened fire in the square, ending a student-led protest for democracy. Hundreds, if not thousands of people were killed. The Prime Minister was asked about the Tiananmen anniversary today during a news conference in Vancouver. We continue to call on China uh, to respect human rights, uh, to respect the, respect the right to protest, to respect freedom of expression, uh, to uh, cease uh, its um, actions against minorities like the Uyghurs uh, in uh, Western China. Uh, we have real concerns about uh, China's behavior in regards to human rights and will continue to advocate both directly with Chinese leadership as I have every time I have sat down with them uh, and uh, indirectly uh, with our allies uh, call for uh, better respect of human rights on this uh, anniversary and every day going forward. Now, bringing it back here, mm -hmm. we are going back one more time to Mile One Center. The puck is just about to drop at Game 6 of the Kelly Cup Finals, and the Newfoundland Growlers could win it all in front of the home crowd. Here now, Zach Gowdy is there with two of the team's very biggest fans. Let's see how Zach's doing. Zach. Yes, indeed. I am here with Dwan Street and John uh, Rich. I think it's fair to call you guys Growlers super fans. Yeah, we're definitely super fans, for sure. Yeah. You guys have showed up, geared up, and there's a huge crowd in the team store right now getting a jersey on before tonight's Game 6. But, Dwan, you've been down here all year. Have you seen the crowds building, those jerseys filling up the stands? Absolutely, and the energy tonight have not seen this arena like this. I mean, even when the ice cast were here, you didn't see this. It's such a different vibe. It's exciting. It's chaos. Everybody has the noisemakers. Like you said, the lineup for the jerseys, it's so good to see. I think everyone's finally buying in that this is our team. This is amazing. And you guys bought in on the ground floor at the beginning of the season. Uh, what's it like to be here now uh, all the way at the end? I bet nobody saw this coming when the inaugural season began. Uh, no, certainly not. Um, I, I, you'd think I'd be super happy, but you know, the thing is, I got a bag of nerves. Like This is, <laughs> this is a lot to deal with. Uh, I never expected to be at a championship game in a professional hockey in St. John's. So 
it's quite unique and it's a lot of fun though. You, you, you guys, you do have a lot of experience watching hockey in this city. For people who haven't been down yet to take in a game, sort of compare the style of ice, the way that you see the Growlers play versus you know some of the Ice Caps and Maple Leafs teams that hockey fans in this city remember. I would definitely put it at least on par with the Ice Caps. I mean, it's fast hockey, it's skilled hockey. A lot of people had a misconception that it was going to be a step above senior hockey and it was going to be junior hockey. But it's not. I mean, the skill of some of these guys, we have local guys, and I think that definitely adds to the draw of the team. But, I mean, it's excellent hockey. Encourage everyone next year, get the bums in the seats, get down, take in the game. You won't regret it. And uh, we just heard a big crowd of people go by. I don't know if you can feel that energy. I think that was the hockey moms, to be honest. I'm pretty sure that was James Melendi's mom. <laughs> so. Well, it does make a big difference because, of course, there are four players, like you mentioned, Juan, on the team from this province. I mean, we cheer for the whole team, but what is the crowd reaction when one of those four guys touches the puck? Well, Zach O'Brien could be the league MVP. I mean, he's got hands of gold, so this is a... <laughs> Uh, he's got hands of gold. I think he's a great hockey player. Uh, you know, he could go farther yet. He has a Calder Cup under his belt, so uh, it is, it's quite something. But to see also Melendi and Party in the back end just being stoned while stay-at-home defense guys, it's good to watch. We only see it how, for one-third of the game because we're on the on the goalie side for the growlers. Right. But uh, when you see him, they're just rock solid. They do so well. You know, we were standing here for a few minutes waiting for this interview to begin, and it's amazing the number of just high fives and hellos and people that you see. I mean, it feels like everybody's here. Everybody's so into it. It's so good to see. I mean, like Amen. I said, the energy, <laughs> right? The energy is great, and all we could hope is that the team feeds off it tonight and brings home the cup. We want to see the cup. Well, listen, I know you guys have got to get in your seats before the puck drops. Thanks for coming out and chatting with us tonight. I'm going to call you the Growlers. Good luck, Charles. So good on you to be here. Thanks a lot. Growlers, go! Thanks, guys. Sports history and the Kelly Cup on the line tonight at mile one. Cross your fingers. Reporting live from the stadium on Zach Gowdy for here and now. Here's a lovely weather photo today, that fog. I think anywhere, this is along the East Coast Trail, and mm -hmm. I think anywhere uh, along the East Coast Trail, even if it's foggy, it's still beautiful. Yeah, it is absolutely <laughs> stunning. It looks like a Jerry Squires painting. It does, it? yeah, <laughs> it does. It does. Lovely. I'll, exactly, I'll tell you exactly where this photo was taken and who took it when we come back.
wind down the show with an animal story as we sometimes do. A little known fact, a typical black bear in the Canadian woods can be brown, but in some rare cases, even white. Have a look. So you can imagine this photographer's delight when he stumbled across this foursome in Alberta. That is amazing. Yeah, there you go. The mother's the brown bear. Her cubs are black and white. Pretty rare, though, considering most black bears are, well, black. <laughs> and the myth that they'll go out of their way to sniff out honey is apparently true. Looks almost like a polar bear. Oh, my it goodness. It does look like that a polar bear. So interesting. It's pretty cute. It's beautiful. Wow. Just Bears. don't get in mama's way. No, that's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. So we have that gorgeous picture. We do. The gorgeous things. Yeah, we'll take a look at that weather photo one more time tonight. It is a, a beauty shot. Someone was hiking on the East Coast Trail in Petty yeah. Harbor. Uh, uh, I knew it wasn't far. I was no, like, can't be Torbay because you had one of those recently. That's true. Well, yeah, that doesn't mean anything. True. <laughs> so there's the photo there. Uh, yeah, just beautiful views. Stuart sent us that photo. Love I, seeing them. I went to uh, North Head. I, I think I mentioned the other night I went from Cape Spear, but I ended up at North Head, and you could look down towards Petty Harbor that way, and there were icebergs, Everywhere. at least a half a dozen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was gorgeous. Yeah, it's well, been a great year gorgeous. for it. It really has. Yeah, so if you have uh, any photos that you'd like to share with us, send them to nlphotos at cbc.ca. Right, and we have to shove off shortly because a great fundraiser for people with learning disabilities in the province is so-called the Blind Date with a Star. Yeah. So we'll be heading out shortly. I hope you'll have time to uh, tune in tomorrow. Thanks a lot for watching. Good night, everyone. Good night.